In this project video, I show how to laminate with HDPE, a recyclable plastic found in a variety of sources, to create lightweight, highly effective ballistic plates that you can make at home. So let's get started. Take that, you little green tip bastard. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're discussing HDPE again, but this time we're talking about it as a laminate. This is by far the best method I've found for creating lightweight armor at home that's very cost effective, guys. We were able to stop things like the M855 and the 7.60 by 54R. Not easy feats for homemade armor, and we were able to do it consistently. So if you're new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and let's get down the rabbit hole of actually laminating and working with this stuff, okay? So today we're going to be discussing six different plates and reviewing three different days of shooting. Quite a lot of content. I'll be showing the plates and tests in order of creation to show how I refine the method of production as well as test variables along the way. This will hopefully illustrate my process when approaching these types of projects and allow you to reap the rewards of my trial and error more effectively. So the first method I tried was nothing more than shopping bags and e-grade fiberglass you can buy at hardware stores. I just used two layers of bag material in between the fiberglass layers and an iron set at mid to low heat to melt the HDPE into the fibers. This process was very slow and tedious as I had to build up the composite layer by layer being careful not to melt any areas of the bag too much as it would form holes. Not ideal for armor. Once I got up to 50 layers for the test plate I finished the process by placing it in an oven for 15 minutes and clamping it in between two boards as it cooled. And although I completely changed the process later on to make it far less time consuming, this plate was the most flexible out of all the plates I made. <laughs> Bring up the camera. That's awesome. <laughs> all right, so big reveal time. 50 layers of fiberglass and grocery bags. Put a small indentation on the ballistic clay. We can measure the depth. But I'm not too worried about this on a 38 Special. This is a full metal jacket. And it stopped it. So that is awesome news. Yeah. We then shot the plates with 9mm full metal jackets, and both those bullets made it through the plate and into the ballistic clay backer. These shots would have still been lethal, however it is important to note that out of a 4 inch block of clay the bullets were found deformed and at less than 2 inches of depth, indicating a significant loss of energy. So we decided to scale it back and use some soft point .44 special ammo out of his Henry Golden Boy. There we go. There we look. See, you didn't miss once. <laughs> All right. So this was a lead tip. Look at that. So that's what I was wondering. That's what I was wondering. So for a first prototype, it had some merits and some flaws, but this got me thinking, how could I improve upon this method? Because remember, this plate was only a quarter of an inch thick and weighed just a bit over a half a pound and consisted of only cheap fiberglass and grocery bags. So that brings us to the second round of plates and tests, where we were able to stop the 357 Magnum, the 7.62 by 39, and the 556. So for these next two plates, I decided to double the HTPE layers between the fiberglass from two layers of bag material to four, hoping that this would decrease the delamination that we saw happening in the first plate. I also increased the fiberglass from 50 layers to 100 for one of the plates and 92 for the other. I also completely removed ironing, instead layering up 10 to 15 layers on, at a time on a cookie sheet and then compressing it down with another one and clamping it. 
I would then bake it while it was clamped at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for around 25 to 30 minutes. This made very thin plates that I could easily stack up and melt together to reach the desired thickness and layers that I wanted. I also want to note that I started to run low on grocery bags, so I decided to use HDPE painter's plastic for one of the plates, as it is a very similar thickness to the grocery bag material. I also found no difference when it came to melting this stuff and testing with it, so I'll put a link in the description on what brand I used and where to get it, as not all types of painter's plastic are HDPE. However, it's very easy to look up what plastic it is on a hardware store's website. I would cut 7 inch strips of this painter's plastic off the roll and just fold it in half so it was about a 7 by 7 inch sheet. This would have right around 8 to 10 layers of film between the fiberglass, which was about the same as 4 layers of grocery bag material. I also want to mention I cut the composite at 6 by 6 with the plastic at 7 by 7. This was due to the fact that I saw shrinkage of the film in the very first test I ever did. This ended up being unnecessary in this case because with proper compression when melting and cooling of this stuff, the film really doesn't shrink. So after I made these 10 to 15 layer thick plates, I just stacked them on top of each other until they were of the 192 layer thickness and just melted them together between two boards for another 30 minutes. And then I would attach a porcelain strike face on them. The porcelain was the Calcutta Warm White, one of the best ceramics from the Ceramic Tile Showdown video I did. Good hit. Let's go see it. Safety on. Good clear. Alright, take a look. There's the bulge. It did not make it through. Look at that, buddy. Yeah. It didn't delaminate it at all. That's crazy. So that's the entry. And there's, look at it, you can see the jacket and stuff in there. So it broke up on that ceramic and was able to actually get caught by grocery bags and fiberglass. Cheap, cheap fiberglass. Tell me that's not ridiculous. Rednecks. We're just nothing but rednecks. Right there. Right there's the jacket. Yep, look at that. <laughs> so this 92 layer plate backer could handle the 7.62 by 39, but not the 556. And because I didn't have the clay with me, it was hard to tell how damaged the bullet was. All we could find was just lead spray and small jackets of the bullet. The clay witness does return from my last set of tests though. We decided to save this plate for more pistol tests and switch out with the 100 layer one versus the M193. Nice hit. So there's a little bit more. So that one actually stopped it. There it is. You can see. Is it even bulging? It is a little. Slightly. It does have a slight bulge. Yeah, but not as bad. Comparatively to the grocery bags, right? Correct. And there's a lot more HDPE in this one. So the other one weighed uh, 11 ounces over a pound. This is 15 ounces. So just an increase of four ounces of fiberglass and HDPE and we're seeing a greater stopping power. But that just kind of indicates how close those were to stopping. You know, they were just turning into shrapnel at this point out the back, but that's great, great news. So now we can try a green tip. I doubt it'll stop, but or you know what? Let's try the Mosin. Let's shoot the Mosin, full metal jacket. So we shot this plate twice with a 149 grain full metal jacket Mosin they got round. And in both instances, parts of the bullet made it through, quite frustratingly I might add. However, it wasn't a complete blowout, showing that there was a bit, with a bit more refinement, this plate might actually stop them. Uh, we also tried the M855, and it also made it through. So we decided to just have some fun with the first plate and put a bunch of 9mm and 357 Magnum into it, knowing it was soon back to the shop for experimentation, as I was not going to finish this video until I stopped the Mosin and the M855. Yeah, another one right up on it. 
We'll go more to the left center. Okay. Let's take a look. And it stopped. Look at how awesome that is. One more for good measure. Yeah, just for good measure. There we go. Yet again, no pass through on that. Look at it bounce. That's that was fun. <laughs> nine 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 nine. Nothing. Check that out. <laughs> oh, that's that's probably the most pleasing thing. That much nine millimeter and just nothing going through it. So it was time for the gloves to come off and finally stop the Mosin and the M855. To do this, I decided to replace this cheap E glass for some S grade fiberglass, Lumat fabric, and fiberglass welding blanket. I'll put a link in the description for where to find these materials as they are still quite cheap and easy to find. I also decided to swap out the Calcutta Warm White plate for two thinner and lighter Capri Classic tiles. This was in hopes of a better breaking up of the M855 steel. Now I've tried this method in the past on this channel with some success, but after having some conversations with Scotty, one of the mods on my Discord and recent winner of the CRS Armor Challenge, I decided to give a double strike face another go. See he had built a plate based off my first design, but increased it up to 100 to 120 layers of the e-glass and added two Cornell ivory tiles on it. And although this first plate was technically disqualified because the strike face wasn't wide enough, it only weighed 8.5 pounds and was able to stop an M855. I'll put a link in the description on where you can see this plate in action. And while you're at it, you, you should check out his other plate that ended up making him uh, victorious in the end. Damn fine work, Scotty. I am proud of you. That hit it a little low, but let's see. Ha ha ha! We did it! Take that, you little green tip bastard. Freaking stopped it. Yeah! So next up, we're going to go ahead and try one of these steel cord uh, 7.62 by 54 r Shout out of, of course, the Mosin they got. We're doing that instead of the full metal jacket because I've never stopped this one before. This is very similar to the uh, 308 or the full metal jack would be similar to the M80 ball. There are different ballistically, I know, but they're very similar for uh, like actual ballistic testing is concerned. So first up, we will do the steel tip stuff and see how well it stops it. Good hit, nice actually knocked shot. it over. So, moment of truth. Hey. Nope. It still made it through. Dead center. That was a beautiful shot. And that was just uh, <laughs> lead spray. <laughs> now this steel core 762 by 54 r was able to pass through the plate, but just barely, man. The steel slug was found quite disintegrated at around an inch or so in. This is quite significant as this ammo often blows a hole right through my clay witness and out the wood in the back. We decided to scale back at this point down to the M855 for two more shots into this plate. All right, so the same plate that got uh, failed by the Mosin they got steel core, we're gonna hit it a couple more times with the M855 whenever you you're ready. Two shots in a row? Yeah. There we go, that was a good hit. So that was the first M855. That was the Mosin steel core. That was the other M855. There wasn't much resistance there. And so was that one. So let's take a look. If I see any pins out the back, that doesn't mean no pins out the back either. So it's still stopping M855. That's the bulge from it right there. Good hit to the left. All right, clear. Okay, but I didn't really tape this one up as careful. So, ha! It stopped it. Stop it! It stopped it. It stopped the Mosin. And that was mostly welding blanket.
M855. Oh, okay, so one actually caught the edge right there. I don't know how many actually, uh, hmm. Ah, oh, there was no ceramic, I bet. Or very little because of the area. So the very last plate was just for pistol rounds, consisting of 20 layers of fiberglass welding blanket and two strips of HTPE painter's plastic. Now this one was able to handle the 38 Special, 45 ACP, 9mm, and the 357 Magnum, all with full metal jackets, multiple shots. And this thing was right around a pound for the 7x7, and only was a half an inch thick. But so when the boys are ready. One of you missed. Oh, uh, which one? Well, he had an extra shot than I did. I yeah. just didn't figure out what was left in that. There's one, yeah, well, one bottom yeah. graze. Yeah. Ooh, a Come little on. bit of penetration right here at the very bottom, but all the other shots, you can see. Yeah, it looks like you're, because your stuff didn't come all the way up to the end. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, this is just HDPE right here because I cut it over the fabric, so it just caught the edge of the fabric. The fabric itself is only 6x6. Six six. Alright guys, it's the, finally the end of the video. Thank you for coming along with this ride. A couple of final thoughts. Um, regardless if you're using milk jug material, this type of film like painter's plastic, or grocery bags, make sure to clamp it while you leave it in the oven. Get it up to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And I would do no more than about maybe 15 to 20 layers thick at a time. Mainly because I'm afraid of the plates kind of shifting, like the fibers actually shifting over, right? I want them to be stacked up perfectly. So I was doing it at that like 15 to 20 by the end of this whole ordeal. And they worked great. I mean, seriously, as you can see the evolution we were getting all the way up to the M855, and those last plates would be only an inch and a quarter thick with the two Capri Classics and this backer, and weigh about eight pounds. The fact that they can handle multiple shots from the M855, right, the little green tip steel core, and stop the Mosin full metal jacket, not the steel core stuff yet. I think we can, though. I think with a little bit more refinement, guys, this process can get even better. But the fact is, with just welding blanket or e glass that you can get from a hardware store, grocery bags, and uh, porcelain ceramics, you could still make a plate right around eight and a half pounds that would be able to do the same thing. You know, yeah, it would it would be a little bit thicker though, because you know, obviously more composite layers. But hopefully, you guys found this interesting and you know got your ideas churning on how you could refine this down even more because I want to take this to the next level right I want to see how thin I can get this stuff how strong I can get it and how cost-effective I can get it you know it it really was an amazing experience I'm so glad it's over though because this has been very time-consuming have a lot of new projects coming out obviously we're going to be doing our 10,000 subscriber special which is going to use this for 10 by 12 SAPA plates that's coming up very soon. I have to talk about annealing of high density polyethylene in solid block form. That's going to be really exciting. And of course, finally, a vehicle update. So, a lot to cover in the next few months, guys. I will see you in the next one. Take care. All right, well, it's the end of the video, guys. It was great having you. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, suggest things you want to see me. A lot of my suggestions come from you guys, so, you know, it's always fun. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. You're a little lower. I know you hit high. <laughs>